getting up, getting outside, taking a walk, or playing a game, getting moving to improve your health is what this episode of Where You Live is all about. Today's Where You Live is all about health through movement. Whether you cycle, dance, or just go for a stroll, it's a showcase of different activities people do to stay healthy. I'm at the community park in Parksville talking to Rob Jonas from the Parksville Golden Oldie Sports Association about a new sport he's introduced here to BC called walking soccer. Rob, what is walking soccer? Walking soccer is uh, specifically designed for those of 55 and up. Uh, it's a beautiful co-ed sport because the basic change is that there's no running, it's walking, there's no contact uh, unless it's incidental and there's no playing the ball above the shoulder. So we have people in their 70s, their 50s, their 60s, male, female, short and tall. It's a great, great all around sport for everybody. Okay, so now you're trying to entice people 55 and older, that would be me, to get out and play again. But why is it uh, that you wanted this walking soccer game to come here? Well, Pagosa is a year-round uh, sporting organization and we have everything uh, from baseball to hiking to cycling, uh, volleyball, you name it. And we did not have any presence in soccer at all. But given our age demographic, uh, 55 and up, this was the ideal uh, bringing in a new sport, but also bringing in one that was uh, specifically designed for 55 and up. Now, I know some of the rules after reading about it. You're not allowed to run. You have to have both feet on the ground or you can get red carded. And it's also a great way for people to get out there and, and stay active without being too physical, I understand. There's, there's no physical contact, but it's a great workout. Um, it's speed walking, essentially. Um, so you can certainly get your heart rate up with that. And as long as you hydrate and stretch a little bit, it's just fantastic for seniors. Okay, now I know that uh, you've been playing now for about a year and you'd like to have more people joining the league so you can have more games? Right, this, this summer uh, we've offered it free to all Pagosa members and just by uh, covering that off quickly, uh, it's a $10 a year membership fee and that money almost all goes to covering insurance. So if you come out and have a boo-boo, uh, you're covered for your $10. But that gives you year-round access to all of our sports and there's 30 or 40, I can't list them all. All right, sounds fun. We are going to watch these guys play walking soccer. Maybe I'll even get a chance to kick the ball. But yes, please. <laughs> thanks, Rob. So, talking about other sports that are new to BC, well, there's or North America, I guess. There's another one called kettlebell lifting, competitive kettlebell lifting. Rayanne Laplante meets a Nanaimo woman who is one of Canada's top kettlebell lifters. Breathe. Bend, lift. Now repeat as quickly as possible within five to 10 minutes. That is the kettlebell sport. Similar to weightlifting, kettlebell sport has categories of snatch, clean and jerk, and jerk, but it's all about the repetitions. But if you have a bad rep, then the judge might not count it, but you're trying to get max number of reps in the time frame. Nanaimo's Rachel Robertson is one of Canada's top kettlebell lifters. Her personal best so far is 104 reps with a 24 kilogram bell. Rachel only began competing in 2014 and already has a long list of accomplishments. Since then, I have gotten my master of sport in long cycle. So master of sport, it's similar to karate, how they have different levels. They have black belt, brown belt. We have different levels in kettlebell, rank one, two, and three, CMS and MS. And MS is the master of sport equal to the black belt. So I've achieved that in one arm long cycle, which I did last year at nationals in Victoria. And I've also, just in March, achieved my CMS in Snatch, so candidate a Master of Sport. Rachel is competing for a third time at Nationals this July and hopes to attend the Worlds for a second time. Although the sport is relatively unheard of in North America, it is widely popular in Europe. Rachel says one aspect she loves about the sport is that anybody can do it. I've seen, like, a man with no fingers lift a kettlebell. I've seen 72 year old men. I've seen different body types, which I think is really neat. And um, everyone can work at their own level and what's appropriate to them. If people are interested in learning about uh, kettlebells, they can come try a class at Ballistic Strength Nanaimo. So they can contact us there or also look up Nanaimo Kettlebell Club. 
The Nanaimo Kettlebell Club is hosting its first local competition on September 9th and 10th at Island Optima to raise awareness about the sport. For Where You Live, I'm Rayan the Plant. Taking a leisurely stroll along an oceanside promenade, riding a bike or simply getting outside is good for our minds and our bodies. However, a fledgling new group in Qualicum Beach recognizes those opportunities aren't always there for many people in their community. The Qualicum Community Education and Wellness Society has set its sights on improving the quality of life for everyone of all ages and abilities to participate in activities to improve and maintain their health. People our age and older, 70s and 80s, are loving to continue doing their biking and kayaking as much as they can and we see that around us at our, in our way of life. And uh, people feel really disappointed when they have to start leaving that behind and they're stuck in their room or indoors. One of the main projects we're looking at right now is a focus on exercise and um, for maintaining health. And um, it's lo we're looking to create a, an accessible gym for people with different abilities that need equipment that they can access where they can transfer from say a wheelchair to um, a swivel machine where they can get on and, and stay active and stay healthy. With help from community partners, sponsorship and donations, they hope to establish an accessible gym facility within the year. So there's a few things happening that uh, will bring the public profile to getting out there and moving, being active, enjoying our community in an intergenerational way. My son's project was working towards with the uh, cycling fundraising project that they call Active Recyclists. The Dome's family, Michael and his wife Naomi, and four children aged 5 to 13, just completed a 1,200 kilometer bicycle trip on the Euro Velo Trail alongside the Rhine River through six countries to raise awareness and funds to provide two adapted tandem hookah cycles, like the ones they used on their journey, for Qualicum Beach residents to borrow, enabling people to get out and exercise. We are looking to make a difference in the lives of children and seniors in our community. We know the importance of being and staying active through all ages and stages of life. We know how fortunate we are to be able to go outside and run, play soccer, hike, kayak, and bike whenever we choose. Not everyone has the same independent ability or opportunity. The Qualicum Community and Education Wellness Society is involved in a number of projects focusing on intergenerational activities, lifelong learning, universal access, and community well-being and hope more will embrace their philosophy and join them. In Qualicum Beach, I'm Ned Lucas. Having fun is one of the most important things, because whether you're performing on stage or not, if you're dancing, it should be fun, it should be enjoyable, it should bring something out of you, right? But also, we really want people to, to kind of get something out of the workshops. I think anyone can, especially these workshops, anyone can do them. They're really geared to be available for any skill level. And the intensive uh, component of this week makes you learn so much faster, as opposed to just going, taking a class once a week for an hour, and then, you know, over the course of that week, you forget everything, and you come back and you're relearning. This is like, okay, let's build every day on what we learned before, and yeah, it's really cumulative that way. So this is the, the 11th annual Body Talk Spring Break Dance Workshop. Crimson Coast Dance Society's mission of bringing uh, contemporary art and contemporary dance to the community um, and Holly's vision of having youth sort of have their own voice, um, that has been culminating for 11 years. We developed this teen council and they called themselves the Body Talk Crew, CRU, 
and they began to be the advisory council. And they learned my role in curating, deciding who comes to Nanaimo. And we've brought artists from uh, Montreal, from Toronto, from Vancouver, and uh, Alberta. So it's just really um, great for them to learn about the curatorial process, why you choose who you choose, and how, uh, how you meld what your vision is with what the talents of the artists are always, in this case, being able to work with community. And um, so this little crew works with us all year long from October to May. This is how the program has evolved and uh, actually produced this event for the community. Uh, when we heard about Oral Collective, we thought, wow, this is really great. When we started watching their videos, we thought, I don't know how they're doing what they're doing, but they've done it. They've, they've melded these two genres together and they can offer it as one um, one artist where previously we would bring two artists in to get them to work together on site so I have to say this is probably the easiest program I've been a part of and this is my fourth year of being in this experience. Um, I've worked with diverse groups of individuals throughout my career. I've been teaching for about 20 years but this is the first time that it has been this intense where it's you know wake up in the morning plan for classes teach for four hours lunch break plan for classes come back teach the adults plan for classes cut music so it's a, it's a different experience. These days, there's people who kind of lost touch with dance. And I think a lot of people kind of think of it as this staged performance or you have to be this professional, you have to be this person that's done it for all these years. And really, dance is like a social thing. It's, it's something that brings people together, and it connects people. It's amazing, yeah, you, it's such a sense of accomplishment to be able to say, yeah, I did that. You know, I got on stage and I did that. And to be on the port, you know, the port stage is so cool. So it just, it's just such a rewarding, uh, yeah, experience. The brightest thing for me is the light in the eyes of the person who is just inspired. So they, whether I inspired them or the experience inspired them or somebody else inspired them, they just have this shine in their eyes and saying that this is the best day of their life. Like, it's just okay, that's so great. And it's different for every person. So it's really interesting to watch that whole combination of things. And we build community by struggling together. And, and it's a good struggle. There's, there's a really positive result on the other side. And what we're gonna experience is their pride flowing from the stage, our pride witnessing what they've accomplished, all of them, and uh, really just sharing that moment together. The sport going on behind us may look a little bit odd. That's because it is a strange version of soccer. It's called walking soccer and it's new here to BC. It's being played in the UK for a long time now, but gaining popularity. And Shelly Gertzen is a team member. She's going to tell me why she likes to play it. Well, I've played soccer for about 30 years now and uh, it's really nice to have the opportunity to, uh, to, to play during the day with other people that are involved and, and uh, I'm getting a little more prone to injury these days and I just can't keep up with young people anymore. So as far as the walking is concerned, it's a lot easier just to keep up and get in there and keep playing the game, keep your foot on the ball. Now, I know you're suffering from, a, you're recovering from some surgery recently, so you're actually being the referee today That's in the right. game. And I just want you to tell me about uh, what it means to be a referee of this game and why it's so fun to referee. Well, it's fun to referee because uh, there is always a lot of back talk from these people, so uh, you can show the card for that apparently now. And the big thing for people to remember is to not run. So and that's really the referee's discretion as to whether a person is running or not. So I, I try to give a few warnings and I will eventually blow the whistle and tell people just to slow it down a little bit. For some people it's just their walking styles is more of a more of a running style than a fast walking. Sounds like a really fun activity that people can get involved in here in Parksville, but there's all kinds of activities that people can get involved in. And even if you can't get up and get moving, and if you've got the sitting disease, doesn't mean you can't do something in that chair. Todd Jones learned more from Dr. Barry White on how to get moving while you're sitting at the desk. Maybe you're like me. Sometimes you're chained to your office chair, at a desk, on a computer all day long, editing a segment like this. Maybe you're not editing a segment, but sometimes that can lead to some bad backs, maybe some bad posture. But you know what? We're here with Dr. Barry White. 
he's a chiropractor and he has some, maybe some exercise and stretches to help prevent this. Absolutely, just some, so we just want to give you some quick tips on how to like uh, maintain your posture while you're at work so you don't get the slumps. And, the slumps, uh, feel, the hunchback. Yeah, the hunchback and... Uh, it's my favorite position really. Yeah. And you know, you, people get tight muscles, they, they get headaches and they get, uh, they get low back pain from sitting in this kind of slump forward posture. Like this. Yeah. Tip number one. So you want to maybe tuck your chin forward, lay it lightly on your neck. You're not squeezing your neck and you're not compressing your neck, but you, then you're, all, you're, you're grabbing kind of lightly the... Uh, you're, lightly. Don't you're squeeze. Not, you're not choking yourself out. Yeah. You're not, uh, not going to pass out here. That's so you're just going to lightly touch and we're just kind of like dragging the skin. We're not compressing, we're dragging the skin. Yeah. You just like, it's like you're petting your neck. It feels pretty good, right? Yeah, it does actually. It's, it's not hard to do whatsoever. It's very easy. Tip number two. From having the slumps, they have their head stuck back like this. And that's not good. It's not good. It causes you, causes you to get a lot of tension behind your back of your head. So what, I'm, what I would suggest people do is they Lengthen the back of the, the tissue at the top of the neck, and so a way to do that is is to tuck the chin into the chest, and then just kind of pull it pull it lightly and hold that for about you know 20 seconds, 30 seconds, and you want to just feel the pull right here, and we want to hold it on that side for 25 or so, and then we're going to switch. You don't look like you're that tight back there. Well, good. This side's a little tighter though. You find that one side's tighter than the other. Some rehab therapists, chiropractors, they recommend doing three times more on, one, on, the, on the, the tighter side or the weaker side as far as exercises go. So if you wanted to cut some corners like everybody that wants to do. <laughs> cut the corners on the good side, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, if you gotta pick a side, pick the pick tight side. Out. There you go. Tip number three. We wanna open up the chest. Open okay. up the chest, okay. All right, so we're, gonna, we're just gonna hold on to a, the desk. So or, this would be a desk or a this, wall? This would be a desk or a wall. And we just, uh, we want to just push our chest out into our arm and we just want to like turn, maybe look away and we want to lengthen out our chest area. And it's important to open those shoulders, get them down and uh, maintain proper posture. This, this actually feels pretty good. It, does, it, does. it, it feels fantastic. I, I, I like the stretch. Hey Barry, I feel like we should be reaching out this arm too. Just... Sure, why not? Why not? Yeah. Tip number four. We want to change our posture back towards opposite of this kind of slump forward posture. So simply, what I'd always tell people to do is uh, we hold our heads back because we want our shoulder blades to come down the back and into our, and our elbows into our back pocket, okay? okay? So what it looks like is my head's always back and I want to keep my elbows low and I want to go down and in. So we want to look up, we want to stick our chest out and we want to maybe do about 25 to 30 of these every day. Every day? Yeah. Is once a day? Should we do it twice a day? Uh, if you, if three times would be the, the best. Neck back like this, right? And, yeah. then, you, and then you keep your elbows And low. then we want elbows into the back pocket. Elbows in the back pocket like this. Okay, so remember your shoulders aren't going up, they're going down. They're going down. So keep your head out, That's right. push your chest out. Okay. And then elbows in your back pocket. That's and then, right. yep, and then go forward and then into your back pocket and you want to feel it right there. We're not doing beach muscles here, we're just doing uh, really small postural muscles that have shut, our nervous system has decided not to use. So you also have another piece of equipment that can possibly help? You're in a chiropractic office, so I want to, I want to uh, demo here to Todd, I want to uh, show him this, uh, how we can also loosen up this upper back area and make, and, and again, uh, put, the, put the shoulders back and create this great posture. You know what, and what's really exciting? Machines scare me, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. Because <laughs> I think terrify me, I don't know why. I guarantee you won't cry. No promises. Possible scary machine. All right, Todd, let's just see what's going on with your upper back, and maybe the chiropractic adjustment can also help with some of your postural stuff, okay? Let's go down the step line here. We're checking T11, T12. It looks like you're, uh, you're tight here at uh, T2 and uh, T6, so why don't we make sure we, why don't we correct that for you, okay? Let's set this, put settings on here. Let's go back down again. All right. And we're gonna, we're gonna adjust your T2, which is right there. And we're gonna use this uh, adjusting instrument. And we're just gonna tap it into place, and it stops when, it's, when, it, when the, uh, the frequency or the, the joint is actually loose, loosened up, okay? When the adjustment's happened, okay? okay. Let's go back further down. Let's, do, um, let's go down to T6. Todd's gonna probably tell me which one T6 is, because typically they show up as tender. Do you feel that right there, Todd? Yeah. 
I can feel it. Let's just get in there and we're gonna just tap it back into place. And then that, and the computer stops when it's in place. I was scared for nothing because I was no problem whatsoever. I feel loose, I feel great. So there you go, Barry showed us some easy stretches and exercises you can do from your own chair, from your own desk, and your own workplace. Thanks very much, Barry. Another season of exciting roller derby action is underway here in Nanaimo. It's fast, it's fun, and it's a great way to get in shape. But the best thing about derby is, it's like one big awesome family. Yeah, we really are a family here, and um, that's kind of the way it, it becomes with, with the team. Once you, you know, start coming out to practice, you become part of this family, and it just is awesome. And that's one of the things I think I love about roller derby the most is the, uh, the camaraderie that we have on the track and off the track as well. Derby has a really strong community. Everybody gets really close with each other. Um, we have a tight-knit family. It's been meaningful to me in terms of providing me with a social network that I didn't have for a long time. To a first-timer, derby seems rough and confusing and could be seen as controlled chaos but there are a number of important rules in place to make the sport safe and fun. We have some pretty intense training. Um, it is all really important. It's been kind of helping with our gameplay because we do have lots of games coming up this season. Well, a lot of people think that you have to have skated before or done some kind of contact sport, but a lot of people on our team, they've never skated prior to coming to do roller derby. They've never done team sports before. So we pretty much teach you everything you need to know from what gear to buy, um, stopping, falling on the first couple of times you come out. And then from there we kind of elevate it into actually doing jams, um, sort of game scenarios. And um, yeah, we, we teach you everything you need to know to play in a game. There's a ton of strategy also, which makes the game as challenging mentally as it is physically. But one of the things that people say about roller derby who play it is that it's like playing chess while having bricks thrown at you. So there's a, a huge uh, mental portion to it. There's a lot of strategy involved in it. Um, it is very physical as well. And there's a lot that goes on that people don't initially see. But once you start to learn a little bit about the game, you realize how much goes into it. And we practice those things at practice so that when we go into a game, we have a plan and we can hopefully win games. So if you're looking to get moving this summer and you want to make some lifelong friends, have a blast and push your limits, you just might like to try roller derby here in Nanaimo with the Harbour City Rollers. Being a part of Derby here has just been a lot of fun, a great way to meet new people and get involved with the community. It's just been super fun. Yeah, I keep coming back because it's just, it's fun to get here and see the girls and everyone's super supportive and like encourages you to keep improving on yourself. So it's awesome. What I love about the sport is it's really inclusive and anyone can really play. Um, it's a super fun, high action like game and it's super fun to watch as well. We welcome everyone and train them from absolutely no skating experience to playing in a full boat. So we welcome you, we want you to come try it. You can come try it and uh, we'll get you some skates to wear and we will put you through the training that we go through. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram. We would love to see you out. Reporting from Nanaimo for Where You Live, I'm Cruel T. We're not trying to make boxers here, but it's a way to get rid of that frustration and you can leave it on, on, the, uh, on the floor and go home feeling better. There we go. With each punch, these men and women in this boxing class at Fluid Fitness Studio in Parksville are getting more than a challenging workout. They're fighting back against the symptoms of Parkinson's disease at Vancouver Island's first rock steady boxing certified gym. All the studies, if you, if you look, they, they all point towards the benefits of exercise, specifically for people with Parkinson's disease. They find that it helps to improve their daily lives, it helps to um, slow down the symptoms for lots of folks, um, makes them feel better. And they don't know what it is specifically about the boxing, um, but you can see how hard these people are working. Parkinson's disease is a degenerative movement disorder which can cause deterioration of motor skills, balance, speech, and sensory functions. 
Rocksteady Boxing, a nonprofit organization established in the United States, gives people with Parkinson's disease hope by improving their quality of life through a non-contact boxing-based fitness program. Doug and his friend Don Reed, who is diagnosed with PD, traveled to Indianapolis and successfully completed the training to offer the program here. And in November of 2016, Rocksteady Boxing Oceanside opened its doors. It's all non-sparring, mind you. It's all it's hitting heavy bags and speed bags, but, but something's happening. Their balance is improving, strength is improving. Having the Rocksteady Boxing, it gives you an outlet for the frustration and the anger that a lot of people feel when you have a chronic illness. It gives you a way to get rid of some of the, of the energy. I'm angry with the Parkinson's, so for me it's a good way to work out the way I feel personally about it and to, to try and improve and, and see, see what difference it really does make so that it's a good study that people see that it improves. I've never been too immobilized with my Parkinson's, but I find what happens is that this gives me information on what to do when I feel my body's collapsing, that my, my, my bone structure no longer wishes to hold my muscles, that my muscles just want to drop down. So I find coming to class gives me skills to manage between classes as well. The trouble is we know so little. We're still in the dark ages. We, we, we know what happens when, when you have Parkinson's disease, how it affects your brain. We do not know why or how it starts. So this is one way, this is one, instead of sitting at home frustrated and angry, you come here and you, and you, you have a blast, you meet great people, you have a great workout. For me, this time flies by and it's, it's one of the most exciting and, and enjoyable things I've ever done in my you know, 12 years of, of being a fitness instructor. Since January, William Wood has been participating in the Rocksteady Boxing program and has noticed a significant difference in his energy and quality of life in just a short time. I feel, I feel actually quite good after class. I feel more energy. I actually take less medication now because I'm in this boxing program. With 15 affiliate studios in Canada, including three now on Vancouver Island, Rocksteady Boxing is a place where inside and outside the ring, participants form friendships with others who truly understand what it is like to live with Parkinson's disease. I don't feel alone. I find that uh, there's other people like me in the community, so it's, it's nice to get together with them to to talk about it. I want people to see what they're capable of, and not what's taken away, but what they're still able to do. And that's the most important thing, because I want people to, I want the grandkids of, of people with Parkinson's to watch the videos and watch them, what they're doing, and, and I want their mouths to drop open. I've been moved to tears several times um, just watching what, what goes on in here. It's just amazing. Rock Steady Boxing Oceanside provides more than just a challenging workout. Through hope and support, it improves the lives of those living with Parkinson's. To learn more about the program, visit OceansidePD.com. In Parksville, for where you live, I'm Jocelyn Natwee. Whatever activity you choose, whether it's kicking a ball or playing on a swing, we hope we've inspired you on this episode of Where You Live to get out and get moving.